Drawing these cute elephants is easier than you think, and I'm going to show you exactly how you can do it, no matter your skill level. Hey hello wonderful people, it's Genevieve, and my goal here on this channel is to teach you all about illustration and design. So if you're new, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of the weekly videos, and so that you can join our wonderful creative community. And with that said, grab your drawing tools, and let's get started. As usual, we are going to start by creating a new canvas so that we have some more to draw. For reference, uh, these are the dimensions of my canvas. It is just the size of the iPad screen because this is just a demo, but make sure you find dimensions that works for your own project requirements. And if you're not exactly sure how to pick a canvas size, I have a video in which I teach you everything you need to know in order to make your decision. So I will link that in the description below. Now, a few key things that we need to do in this file to set it up before we can start sketching. Um, well, the first thing is if you do want to have the reference image here on the top left, all you have to do is go in the wrench icon menu and the canvas submenu, you're going to have the option to activate a reference, which is going to let you import an image. So if you want to use my illustration here as a reference, you can download it. It will be linked in the description below. It's totally free and it's going to come with the color palette that I'm going to be using here. That being said, you don't need this color palette. I'm going to give you tips if you want to pick your own colors, you can definitely follow, um, follow along with that. But if you do want the color palette, it is linked in the description below. Now, the first thing we're going to do is set the background color. So just on the background color layer right here, going ahead and selecting a dark color. Now you could go with a dark blue, a dark green, whatever you want. I'm going to go with this really nice deep purple. So almost black, but you know, kind of wine grape color. And if you do want to have two elephants, like here I have these two elephants that are doing this uh, little heart, it's kind of for Valentine's Day, um, we're going to activate symmetry. That being said, you could totally follow this video along without symmetry if you want to just have one elephant and make it more of a lucky elephant. But if you do want to have both elephants, we're going to go back in the wrench icon menu. And in the canvas submenu, we are going to activate the drawing guide right here. And then we're going to click on edit drawing guides. So it's going to open up this menu here and we have a few options. The one that is super important to activate is symmetry right here. And then within symmetry, just clicking options, selecting vertical, and then making sure assisted drawing is activated and rotational symmetry is deactivated. So since we're working on a background that is really, really dark, you're probably going to need to adjust the color of the guide. So the color of the guide, you can just pick it at the top right here. Sometimes I find it's a bit hard to actually select it. <laughs> I find it's easier with the pencil, uh, with the, the finger, sorry. So just selecting a color that you can see and then tweaking the opacity and the thickness until you know you can really clearly see your guide. These settings are not going to affect the final results, not going to affect the symmetry. It's just really for the visualization of the guide itself. So find something that you're happy with. I'm gonna go with something very intense so that you guys can see it in the demo. And then once you're happy with your guide, when it sits right in the middle, go ahead and click on done. So now we have the base settings done for the symmetry, but we need to activate the symmetry on the layers where we want it to apply. What I mean by that is when you create a new layer, it's not automatically going to have symmetry. So go ahead and actually create a new layer, rename this one to sketch. And we're going to start with a super rough sketch, but we do want the rough sketch to be mirrored on both sides. So just go ahead, tap on your sketch layer. You might need to just deselect it if you're typing and tap on it to open up the layer menu. You're going to be able to then activate drawing assist, which is going to write a little assisted under the layer name. So if you don't have assisted under your layer name, even if you activated the symmetry in the menu here, it's not going to work. So you need to activate it every time on every layer where you want to have symmetry. Once you have that though, you're golden. So we're going to start, like I was saying, with a super, super rough sketch, which for that you can use any color of your choice as long as you can see it from the background. I like to sketch which is a neutral gray. And in this video, I'm always going to be suggesting two different kinds of brushes. One is going to be a free brush that comes with Procreate. It's going to allow you to follow along. Totally fine. Seriously, this video is really not about the brushes. You can see there's no crazy intense, funky texture here. So free brushes are totally fine. And I'm also going to be suggesting brushes from my Ultimate Illustration Bundle, though I'm really not going to lie in this video. They're not 
you know, they're really not, they don't make that big of a difference. So for the sketch, honestly, we're not going to see the sketch in the final result. So you just use a brush that you know you're comfortable with and that you are used to working with. If you're working with free brushes, you could use in the sketching panel the HB pencil. That would be my recommendation if you don't have another brush that you know you like more. But if you have the illustration bundle, go ahead and pick the sketching brush. And here we're simply going to start by roughly mapping out where the elephant is going to be. I say where the elephant and not the elephants because we're just going to draw one and it's just going to be repeated. So mapping out roughly the ground, you can see it's going to be repeated on the other side. For now we're just going to focus and kind of zoom on one side. You can then map out a rectangle or a square depending on the proportions you want for kind of roughly the body. And then splitting that in two halves so that you have the legs and then the body itself. Awesome! So once you have this basic rectangle, we're going to use even more basic shapes to create the structure of the elephant. So we don't want to try and go ahead and straight up draw, you know, the elephant. We're just going to keep breaking it down in simple shapes until we have something that starts looking like an elephant. So we're going to start that by with the legs. I think that's pretty pretty easy way to do it. So you're just going to draw ovals and then you're going to draw the legs that are further back. So just the same thing, ovals. But you're going to notice in my example, I have legs that are bent and they're not bent in the same way um, from one elephant to the other. So for now, we're just going to focus on this one. And later when we add the colors, we're going to just change a few things between the different elephants. So just adding an oval, but this time it's going to be pointing backwards. We're also going to map out the trunks. So the trunks, you can see I'm drawing them in an S, like a very thick S so that it can create this heart shape. So you could go ahead and map that out first because that's going to affect where the head is. We want that to connect and create a heart shape. So that's the first thing we should draw because if we were to draw, you know, the head first, maybe there would not be enough room for for the trunks or maybe they just wouldn't align like that. So make sure that you create your S first if you do want to have this art shape at the top. Once you have your trunk, you can go ahead and actually kind of start mapping out the head. You can start with just a very basic oval and then drawing another one next to it for the ear, which is going to be roughly the same size. I know this doesn't look much like an elephant. Uh, trust me, honestly, this is pretty much all you need in terms of the structure. And you might be wondering, you know, why are you having us draw a bunch of random shapes like this as opposed to, you know, starting to try and draw the elephant as like the first thing we draw, like starting to draw, I don't know, trying to draw the ear and then the head and the trunk. Like, why are we doing like this and not like this? Well, the reasoning for that is when you're creating your own characters, I know right now you're following the tutorials, but if you were to create your own characters, or even if you're just following the video but want to tweak your characters, if you break them down in basic shapes, then it's much easier to change the proportions because you don't have to think, okay, how does bringing the ear um, and making a bigger or smaller affect the rest of the character? All you have to think is, oh, I'm going to make a smaller oval here, or I'm going to tilt this oval in different direction. So as instead of just thinking of the piece as one big outline that you try to draw, you think of the piece as super simple shapes that are easy to move around. So once you have your super rough base sketch like this, we are going to go ahead and refine it because right now it definitely is just not, you know, elephant like. So go ahead and create a new layer. Rename this one to clean sketch. And you're going to, don't forget to activate drawing assist, <laughs> and you're going to lower the opacity of this base sketch right here. So we have now a really good structure lines that we can just go back and on the clean sketch layer with the same pencil, the same color, go back and draw the outline of the elephant. So it should be quite simple because you already have, you know, the guides. So you can just go over and decide, okay, how are you gonna build the trunk right now we have a very quick s but adding some thickness to it something like this could look really good okay adding the the end of the trunk now for the head do you want a round head like this or do you want a kind of pointy head you can try you know you have the base shape you can try and see how you want to go from there i'm gonna go with just a 
a rounded angle, I guess, and in between. Same thing with the ear. You could have a super round ear. You could have a pointy ear. So basically here, you can just go and from the space shape, customize your elephant by just changing the angles a little bit, just changing how the curves are going. So it's really super fun, but it can allow you to just, you know, customize your piece based on just the same structure that we're all using. So that's, you know, that's pretty cool. Now here I'm going to stop talking to let you focus and don't be afraid to experiment, you know, experiment different ways of drawing your outline and if you realize that you don't like one of your experiments, just undo, redo and retry, you know, it's not, it's not the end of the world. And yeah, we're going to meet when we have a clean sketch, so we're going to meet in the next step, which is going to be adding the color. So you could just go ahead and skip if you don't want to use my video as a reference, you can go ahead in the video timeline and skip to the next chapter with the colors. I know I said I was going to stop talking, but if you have some parts that you want to move around very quickly, you always have the option to use the selection tool, setting it to freehand, and then selecting, for example, the legs here, mine are way too close up front, and with the arrow tool you can just move them around, and it might be helpful if you have mag magnetic activated in your snapping, deactivate that so you can really move them around freely. And yeah, that way you can just kind of reposition stuff that is not where it should be, like my legs were way too close at the front. Now just note though, if you do use the selection tool, it is not going to move it on the other side, but it doesn't really matter because we're going to draw the silhouette based on this side anyway, and it's going to automatically be recreated on the other side. So seriously, just focus on this side looking good and the other one, just don't worry about it for now. Great, so once you have your sketch like this, you could go ahead and either hide the rough sketch or keep it and then merge the two layers depending on what you prefer. Usually I like to keep my rough sketch but today I don't think so so I'm just gonna go ahead with my clean sketch. In this case you can go and delete the rough sketch and we are going to create a new layer that we're going to put below the clean sketch and on this one we're going to just draw the silhouette of the elephant. So we can rename this layer to color and since we want the symmetry don't forget to activate drawing assist. And it might be helpful at this stage to set your clean sketch layer to multiply. Now essentially what multiply does without getting, you know, in all the details is that your sketch, you're going to be able to see it well, no matter the color that is underneath. Even if the color is super dark or super light, you're going to be able to see your sketch because multiply is going to essentially adjust um, the contrast between your sketch and the background. Not the most accurate explanations, but we're going to go with that for now. You can also, if you want, lower the opacity of your sketch until you can just barely see it. That way it's not going to be in, like too much in your face when we add the color. It's not going to be too distracting. So going back on your color layers, all you're going to do is selecting the base color you want for one of the elephants. So here I'm going to go with kind of pinkish, a salmonish color because I want to have something that is a bit Valentine's day E, <laughs> but you could go with totally different colors. I like to go with colors that are pretty bright for the elephant so they can contrast with the background. So any hue but pretty bright would be my recommendation. And here in terms of brushes, pretty simple. If you're working with the free brushes, you could go in the sketching panel with the 6B pencil. Or if you have the illustration brushes, go ahead and pick the outlines brush. And all we're going to do here is pretty simple. We are going to outline everything and then fill in to have one solid silhouette. So you're just going to go over all your lines and picking one that is going to become the line that you're going to use. And with that, it is time for the secret password. So if you've watched this far in the video, please let me know if you're drawing one or two elephants in this piece. And if you're new on the channel, you might be wondering, you know, what is the secret password? What is that all about? Well, it's a game. I hide a secret word in all of my videos and it's for you guys to find. But not only, you know, is it a game, the most important thing about it is it gives me a lot of information to how to edit and pace my videos better, which helps me to create better tutorials for you guys. So, you know, that's 
super super important and it's also really cool because you guys know me you see my face in the intro you're my voice throughout the entire video but i have no idea who you guys are and so whenever you leave a comment whatever the comment is i get to sometimes see your name sometimes see your face and it's just really great to see who's part of the creative community that we're building here on this channel so just leave a comment with just how many elephants you're drawing if it's one or two and then we're going to keep going so once you have the outline for your silhouette, you can simply go ahead and drop your color to fill it in. Now since we're using, as you're going to see here, since we're using brushes that have textures to it, to grit to it, you're going to need to probably tweak the threshold when you drop your color. So you can do that by holding your pencil on the screen and then moving it from right to left to right until you know, you find the moment right before the color fills in the entire screen. So you want to fill in as much of your of your shape as possible without you know filling everything else so in my case it's going to be there and then you can just repeat the step if you have multiple sections until you have a completely filled in silhouette i don't know if you can you can hear i have some birds chirping in the background it's so nice oh my god i can't wait to go outside today <laughs> And I say that every time, once you have your silhouette, you're probably going to notice that stuff is not exactly how you thought it was going to be. So it's one thing to sketch with just, you know, a bunch of lines, but when you see solid silhouettes, sometimes they don't look as good. So that's one of the reasons I really like to draw silhouettes before moving on to separate parts with separate color. It just allows you to quickly see what your piece is going to look like in terms of big shapes and contrast and then just change that very quickly before you move on to adding details so for example here i don't like this curve here on the back i'm just going to fix it very quickly so you know go back and change anything that you want to change at this stage now once you have your silhouette one thing that i recommend doing is activating or sorry deactivating drawing assist on your color layer so that you can change stuff from one elephant to the other i'm personally not a fan of the perfectly symmetrical look so what i like to do is just going back and for example erasing the tail on one elephant and then just drawing a slightly different one just so it doesn't feel like the piece is one elephant duplicated essentially which is what it what it was but just adding a few differences can be super quick but then it just makes the piece feel a bit more i, I don't know it just make it feel like you cared more i guess <laughs> it's not just copy and pasting both sides there's actually slight differences so i don't know that might just be me but <laughs> i always like to go back whenever i use symmetry and make an effort to change a few things so the tail maybe like i was saying um, making one of the legs bent in a different direction. You could change the shape of the head as well. So maybe this one is going to be slightly more pointy, angular. And one other way we're going to help the piece feel not exactly like pure symmetry is having the elephants be slightly different colors. So if you're using, you know, um, so if you're following along with the color palette, this column here is for one elephant and this other column here is for the other elephant. But if you're using your own, you know, if you're picking your own colors, essentially what I recommend doing is having one elephant be the base a bit darker. So you can see that's my first elephant, that's the one I used. And then the second color is just the same kind of pink, but darker. So. If you're using your own colors, if you, for example, drawing a blue elephant, just go back to your base color and make it slightly darker. And then we're going to recolor the second elephant really quickly. We are going to go in the layer panel and then we're going to swipe the color layer with two fingers towards the right, which is going to activate alpha lock. You can also activate alpha lock by just tapping on a layer and then clicking alpha lock in the menu. And then alpha lock, what it does essentially is now everything we draw on this color layer is going to stay within the silhouette. So that means we can just quickly brush over one of the elephants to change the color. Now here the brush doesn't really matter. You just want to make sure that it's big enough so that's fairly quick to fill in your elephant. You're probably going to have to zoom in on the trunk part because one trunk is probably going to be slightly in front of the other. So here you want to make sure that you, you kind of draw that and then you can just keep filling in it. We're also going to add a little bit of color variation or texture, I should say, within the elephants. So for that, still with the alpha lock activated on color layer, we're going to pick slightly different versions of our base color. 
So let's say I go back with this elephant right here. The base color was just a kind of desaturated pink. I'm gonna go with a slightly different hue so you can see it shifts a little bit more towards purple. Still very bright, maybe even brighter than my base pink. So what I mean by that is what you're going to do is, let's say my elephant, my base elephant, it was a blue. Let's say this was my base color. What you're going to do is you're going to make your base color lighter and then slightly different hue, so shifting it either a little bit towards the right or a little bit towards the left. Not a big shift, just a tiny bit. And you're going to see if I pick my color from the uh, color palette. When you go over, it's just a little bit different, but not too much. So here you could stick with, if you're working with the free brushes, you could stick with the 6B pencil. Or if you have the illustration bundle, go ahead and pick the basic texture brush. And if you're working with an Apple pencil, instead of drawing, you know, precise lines, you're going to tilt your pencil so that you can fill in a bigger area. Otherwise, you're going to have to make your brush bigger if you're, for example, working with your finger, which if that's what you do, I really admire you. I don't have the patience for that. <laughs> so here, what we're going to do is we're going to brush the top part of the elephant. So just kind of something like this. And you can see it's very subtle, but it does add some texture and it's going to kind of just help make the piece feel more interesting very quickly uh, because we're not adding a lot of details and a lot of, you know, the, the elephants are flat otherwise. So it's <laughs> so just a very quick way of bringing them to life a little bit more. Now we're going to do the same thing on the other elephant. So this time we're going to select the base color and we're going to move the hue towards the opposite side. So in my case, first the base elephant on the left, you know, it was a pink and I made it a little bit more purple. So I mean, I changed the hue and put it more towards the left. This time I'm going to change the hue more towards the right, which is going to make it more orange. So essentially I'm going to end up with the salmon color. It's also a little bit brighter so that we can really see the nice contrast. And same thing, we're just going to brush over the top of the other elephant. So the last thing we have to do before we move on to the details, which is really going to make this look better, is just adding the tusks. So going ahead and selecting a nice cream color, not quite white so that we can add some highlights later. You honestly, you don't have to really worry about the brush here. Just going ahead and quickly drawing the tusks. I personally like to not use color drop here, first of all, because we're drawing on a color so it would fill the entire elephant, um, but also so that I can get some texture within these tusks and drawing them without the drawing assist or the symmetry, I should say, activated so that we can really get a little bit more personality here. So you could get, you know, you could go back and activate drawing assist, but I think it's a nice quick way of once more making the elephants look a little bit different from each other. It doesn't take a long time at all, but that way, you know, they're not exactly the same. So the details are going to be very simple. We're basically just going to go back and outline some sections and add, for example, the eyes and stuff like that, but it's really going to make a big difference. So should be pretty cool. We're going to go ahead and create a new layer, rename this layer to details. And you have a few options here. You could go ahead and have details that are mirrored. So you could activate the symmetry if you want. But for the same reason that I went ahead and deactivated my symmetry on the colors to change, for example, the tail and everything, I like to go back in with the details and draw them on both elephants separately so that I can really make sure that they're not going to be exactly the same. That being said, if you're pinch on time, you can activate the symmetry and just draw the details on one elephant and have them repeat on the other one. But you're going to have to deactivate the symmetry then to just change, for example, the tail, the legs, and anything else that might be different from one elephant to the other. Personally, I'm going to keep it deactivated as I was saying. It's really not super long to draw the details, so I think it's worth it. And we're going to pick a darker version of our base color. So if I go back to the base color I used on the left elephant, making it quite darker, which is essentially going to end up in this kind of strawberry color. And we're going to pick, honestly, any brush that you know you like for outlines. I would recommend if you're using still the free brushes, keeping the 6B pencil. It has really nice grit and it's going to blend well with the texture. And if you're using the illustration bundle going back to, well not going back, but going to the outline brush. Here, if you wanted, you could have an outline everywhere. So just outlining the entire elephant. 
I'm going to use it more sparingly in this illustration and I'm just going to draw outlines where there would be an overlap so where two body parts are overlapping but they're not quite separated yet so for example here uh, the ear I mean the ear is just disappearing in the body so I would go ear in here and drawing the line for the ear so it's really not super complicated but you can see it's really going to make your illustration start looking interesting because your different elements are going to look like different elements and not just a big blended smush. And don't forget to draw the eyes at this stage and you're going to, it's just a, a quick detail um, that I want you to notice in the illustration. My example, you can see one eye is kind of a U shape and the other eye on the other elephant is the opposite, so a hill shape instead. This is a tiny little detail but it does give some difference in the expression the facial expression of the elephants so that's one way of really giving them quickly different personalities and different characteristics just flipping the eye so just a quick note that I want to give you and I'm going to stop talking here to let you focus on drawing your outlines and details and like I was saying you can draw as much or as little in terms of the outlines as you want so you could go ahead and draw the entire outline of the elephant or just draw little lines where you feel like the body parts should be separated and they're not separated yet and i'm going to keep my video rolling in the background if you want to use it as an example if you want to copy where i am drawing my outlines otherwise feel free to skip ahead we're going to meet in the next step so once we have all our outlines we're going to start shading Great, so now that we have all the details in that line, we're going to go ahead and hide this clean sketch layer and double check that everything is there. And if you realize you're missing anything, just, you know, go back and draw the details. Otherwise, we're going to start shading and we're going to do a very simple shading here. It's not going to be super realistic, but it's going to be more than enough for what we need. And at this stage also, you could go ahead and hide the symmetry guide. So just going back in the wrench icon menu and deactivating drawing guide, it's not going to delete it. It's just going to hide the, the view of it so you could always bring it back and it's going to be in the same spot as before. So for the shadows we are going to create a new layer above the colors. We're going to rename this layer to shadows and we're going to apply it as a clipping mask so that everything we draw on the shadow layer is going to stay within the base color. Now we're going to use the blending mode linear burn here and we're going to lower the opacity around 50%. Now linear burn I really like it because it makes your colors you know darker so whatever color you use to paint is going to look dark on the base color but it's going to allow you to have colors that adapt to the base color so instead of for example going in picking a pink and then making it darker and drawing your shadows like that using linear burn is going to make it so that you know the color you use is going to be different on this pink on this pink on the tusks on this pink on this orange so it's going to adapt to the color that is below so instead of having to change your shadow colors all the time you can just pick one draw all of your shadows and it's going to blend really nicely with the base and in terms of picking your shadow color the only thing i would do is try to avoid using a neutral gray because then that's going to make your shadows look super muddy i usually use a gray that has a little bit of purple in it that's just a color that i know works well because shadows usually tend to be a little bit cooler so having a bit purple is, is good but you could experiment and since we're drawing on a separate layer we always have the opportunity to change the color later and I'm going to show you how so for now just pick a gray that has a bit of purple in it if you're using the color palette it's going to be this one right here and you're going to yeah on your shadow layer with a, the either still the 6b pencil brush or the basic texture brush going back and drawing shadows where there's a body part that is kind of further in the piece first so we're going to start with the legs that are in the back so just really quickly sketching them and as you can see still here I like to draw very quickly to keep building on that texture so I'm not necessarily for example outlining my shape here and then using color drop because that way you don't have you know a lot of texture in your shadows 
And since this is a simple piece, we don't have a lot going on in the elephant, I want all the opportunity I have to build my texture. Okay, so when we have the legs, it's already a bit better, but we can add much more shadows than that. So we're going to now add shadows whenever there's an overlap between body parts. So for example, the body on the tail, the ear on the body, this leg on the body, you, you get the point. So we're just going to start gently from the crease of the overlap and then feather it in or smooth it in, I guess. So same thing here, we have a crease, draw your shadow there and then you smooth it in so it blends it with the rest of the piece. And still, if you're using your Apple Pencil, that's where you would tilt it so that it can cover a big space, a big area, sorry, very quickly with a lot more texture. And going back and just, you know, erasing if you are having any overlap that shouldn't be there. So really the step is not super complicated, we're not drawing realistic shadows in any way, we're just making the different body parts, you know, be separated from each other even more. So here, once more, I'm going to stop talking, you know, you get the idea whenever there's a crease or an overlap, you go ahead and draw a shadow there. Oh, but before we do that though, I just want to tell you, you know, right now your shadows are probably going to look super intense and you might not like the color. For now, don't focus about that, just think about the placement of the shadows once we have everything placed. We're going to go back and play with the opacity of the layer and the color of the layer so we can just have shadows that blend in better because right now it's a bit chaotic. Not too bad, but not, not great either. So once you've placed everything, like I was saying, don't hesitate to go back and play with the opacity of your shadow layers until you get, you know, a blending that you like more. I think this is good for me. And you could also go back in the adjustment panel here at the top, selecting hue, saturation and brightness, and then playing with the hue. So that's what I meant with you can just quickly pick a color and then later we'll to fix it. You can just always, since we're drawing on separate layer, go back and tweak the colors of your layers. So here, honestly, I might just shift mine a little bit like this. So just honestly, just play with the settings. There's not a right or wrong way to do it. You could also just like the color you picked first, but you can always tweak the settings until you find something that maybe you like even more. So once that is done, we're going to quickly draw a ground shadows and then move on to the light. So just your ground shadow, create a new layer below the elephants. Rename this one to ground shadow and use the linear burn blending mode as well. You're going to lower the opacity again for now around 50%, but we're going to tweak it later. And you're quickly just going to draw shadows below your elephants. Now it's probably very hard to see on the screen, but we're going to add a bit more light in the background later, so it's going to help see it. And it's going to make it look like your elephants are standing on something instead of just floating in the middle of nowhere. So once you have that, we're going to also add lights. So for the lights, just creating a new layer above the elephant shadow layer, renaming this layer to lights, and then clipping mask so that it stays within the base shape. We're going to, for this layer, use the blending mode add. Add is very, very strong though, so you're going to lower the opacity for now around 30%. And you can use any bright color you want. I usually, for my lights, go with a bright yellow or bright orange so it looks like the sun, but you could go with a bright whatever. And with the same brush, all we're going to do is we're going to brush on some of the edges that are facing upwards. So for example here, the top of the back. And as you can see, that really helps the elephant pop from the background. Super simple way of adding highlights. If you watched some of my other videos before, you know that's my go-to. It's definitely not realistic, but I like it. It works well and it's quick, so there you go. <laughs>
So you can see already with just the very quick highlights, the piece pops so much more. Now there's another thing that you can do if you want to make your elephants more interesting, which is adding some patterns like I have in my example here. If you don't want patterns on your elephant, you can just skip ahead to the background chapter. It will be in the, uh, the timeline of the video. You can just click on the next chapter. Otherwise, what we're going to do here is very quick, very simple. We're going to add a new layer below the lights and shadows, so right above the color. So this layer, if you put it below uh, the shadows, should be activated as a clipping mask automatically. Otherwise, you know, activate it in the menu. And rename this one to Details. Now for now, we're going to leave the blending mode as normal, but we're going to change it later. And we're going to pick the same color we used for the tusks, so this super nice bright cream color. And going back, if you're using the illustration brushes to the outline brush, otherwise sticking with the 6B pencil, you can do at this stage is just add some little details and drawing elements to your elephants. So it could be, you know, just slightly curved lines on tusk, maybe with little semicircle with dots. So it's kind of thinking of a mandala here, honestly, but on some parts of the elephant. And you can see it takes two seconds and a half but already it's so much more interesting. So you can just go over your elephants, play with different patterns. You could draw flowers, you can draw hearts, you can draw stars. And seriously, super quick, but it does make a big, 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 big difference. You can also draw, I guess, the nails or the toes of the elephant on this layer. And this is really a step that if you're doing it, it doesn't take a long time, but take the time to explore different patterns. So once more, I'm going to stop talking to let you focus, but I'm going to keep my video in the background if you want to use it as a reference. And otherwise, we're going to meet in the next step, so for the background. Great, so the last thing we have to do is working on the background and there are a few different things you can do in the background. The main one being just adding a light to make it pop a bit more. So for that, we're going to go ahead and create a new layer and making, this, and making sure that this layer is below the ground shadow. And we're going to rename this one to background light. Now at this stage, if you have a lot of layers for elephant, you can always go ahead and just swipe them towards the right with one finger and then group all of those layers which is just going to make your file feel a bit more organized and you can rename this group to elephants now back on your background light layer essentially what you're going to do is you're going to pick this is the background color i use you can see it's this dark plump you're going to pick a lighter version of it and you're going to shift the hue a little bit so my plum color was a bit more on the purple side and this brighter color is going to be lighter but also a little bit more pink. So whatever color you use for your background, you're going to change it a little bit, change the hue a little bit and then make it slightly brighter. In here, all you're going to do is with whatever brush you have, you're going to draw a circle, kind of like this. And then if you hold your pencil, Procreate is going to create an ellipse so it's going to close up your circle. Just make sure that the size is you know, pretty much reaching the middle of the elephants. And then you can fill in your shape. So right now it looks bad, <laughs> but that's the base we want to have. And once you have your basic ellipse, you can go with the smudge tool here at the top, setting it to the stucco brush from the painting panel and just blend this oval in a little bit. So it doesn't need to be perfect in any way. We actually want to have some of that texture because the elephants are full of texture. It's really nice to have texture in the background as well. So something a little bit like this. And you can see already it just looks so much, much better. And you can play with the opacity here. I like something a little bit like this. So in my case, I'm going to put it around 60%, but it might be different for you depending on the colors you're using. And you could stop here if you want. Or it's really hard to see. I'm going to bring back my example so you can see it better. You could draw this kind of mandala effect or pattern effect, depending on what you had on your, your elephants in the background as well, just to make the piece feel a bit more complete. So if you want to do that, go ahead and create a new layer. Make sure that it's above your background light, but below your ground shadows. And rename this one to background whoa, details. 
Oh, and I remember, I, I just remembered, I said we were going to go back and play with the blending mode of the elephant patterns. Um, that's true. <laughs> so on your elephant patterns here, I renamed it, I named it to details, but we already have a detail layer, I just realized that. But the details that are, you know, the white decorations on the elephant, you can go back on this layer and um, play with the blending modes and just try, experiment, see if there's one that you like. There's not a right or wrong one. Um, it really is a case of what you feel like. I think I'm going to go with overlay. Whoops. And then lowering the opacity a little bit. So, sorry, I forgot to tell you about that. Terrible mistake. I really apologize. But yeah, you can do that and play with the opacity of this kind of pattern layer on the elephant. And we're going to do the same thing. That's why I remember we're going to do the same thing on this background detail layer. So pinking the same blending mode you use. So in my case, overlay and lowering the opacity around, you know, whatever you had for your elephant patterns. And going back with the bright color, the bright cream we use for the task, sticking with the outline brush or the 6B pencil, you can draw any patterns. Now, if you want to have kind of a mandala like me, you might want to go back in the wrench icon menu, in the canvas sub menu and activating your drawing guide again. But if you want a mandala, you're going to go back and edit your drawing guide in the symmetry, you're going to go in the options, and this time instead of vertical, you're going to pick radial. So you're going to see you have a bunch of pizza slices now instead of just one line. And so you can click done. And now if you activate drawing assist on your background details, everything you draw in one pizza slice is going to be repeated in the other. So that way you can quickly create a fun background. Here, once more, I'm going to stick with the kind of Mandela vibe. So I'm going to draw similar patterns than what I have on my elephants but in the background but again you could really draw anything but you know it really doesn't need to take you a whole lot of time here essentially what you want is just adding a bit more detail in the background without taking away the focus from the elephants so keeping it super simple is the key here but it really does make the piece feel a little bit more complete when you have a little something going on here in the background and as you can see, the key here is really to try and experiment, you know, draw a line, draw a shape, see if you like it, zoom out. If you don't undo, that's why you keep seeing me doing. I just, I'm trying thing as I go and I really encourage you to do the same. So instead of, you know, necessarily exact copying exactly what I'm doing, experimenting, trying. And if you like what you come up with, that's amazing. If you don't, that's fine. Try something else or copy what I'm doing. That's always okay. Releasing your inner child and filling in the background with a bunch of tiny little shapes. And there you go, you could go back to your wrench icon menu, deactivate the drawing guide so you can see it better, check that everything is okay, and that was it. And if you want to turn this into a greetings card or a Valentine's Day card or something like that, I will link in the description below a video that you can use. I include a template and I show you how to format everything so you can print it and use it as a regular card. And if you enjoyed this video and want to learn how to create more cute illustrations, I highly recommend you check out this playlist in which I'm going to teach you exactly that. But before you leave, make sure to give this video a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of the weekly videos I post every Tuesday and Saturday. Then click on the link right here and I'll meet you there.